in groups. I apologize for my computer talking to everybody. Um, so Circle of Security is a parenting group. I use it individually or in groups at the same time or at the groups as well. Um, so quickly, Circle of Security is an eight week parenting program. It can be done individually or in a group session. It uses videos to help explain the content within the videos. Um, there's the utilization of pauses so that caregivers or parents don't have to spend too long wondering what's going on on screen and that the clinician doing it myself can address questions and can also ask questions to help them think a little bit deeper about the content. Um, so circle security is best used for parents and caregivers from stages from prenatal all the way up to seven years old. Um, what Circle of Security does is it helps to promote secure attachment with, caregiver, with parents and their caregivers to their children. Um, Circle of Security can be offered as a parenting course, and I have used it for parents who have active DCP and P cases and need to attend a parenting group. Um, there are take-home materials, and there's also a certificate that's included. So what we see when there's insecure attachment are children who are more prone to being clingy, may have more violent actions or more aggressive, they have problem trusting others, they have difficulties forming friendships, they have difficulties dealing with stress and adversity, they have low self-esteem, they may lack empathy, and then there's difficulties, they have difficulties expressing anger and sadness. Um, so what Circle of Security looks to do is they want to help parents and caregivers understand their child's emotional world by learning to read their emotional needs. Um, later on in my presentation and a little bit in the video that I will show you, it gives a diagram and breaks down every, all, all the kids' emotional needs on the circle that Circle of Security references. Um, so it helps to give the parents a roadmap. Um, in helping them learn to read their emotions, they then can now support their child's emotions, whether it's really difficult emotions or it's emotions that parents have more ease dealing with. Um, so in supporting attachment, in looking to create that relationship, it also enhances the development of a child's self-esteem. Also, Circle of Security works to honor the parent and caregiver's innate wisdom and desire for their child to have a secure attachment. So really coming to the parents and being like, we know you're trying your best. We also know that parenting is really hard. So here is some things that we can think about in order to make this job a little bit easier. Um, it also works to reframe language and behavior so reframing how parents talk to their children, but then also helping parents see that not all behavior is misbehavior and that a lot of times when we're seeing behavior in the little ones, that it is actually that we're seeing stress behavior. So then how do we come with this empathetic way to then help children work through these difficult moments? And then in doing all this, they're looking to strengthen the parent-child relationship. So circle of security and, circle, and secure attachment can promote um, children who feel more happiness with their parents. They feel maybe less angry at their parents. Um, they're more comfortable coming to their parents when they're in trouble. Um, they then learn that they can solve problems on their own. They then get along better with friends. They have lasting friendships. Um, they can then also solve problems in their different relationships. They have better relationships with their children. Um, having secure attachment also helps children have a higher self-esteem. And then also knowing that most problems have an answer and that it's not something that, not all problems are something they have to do on their own. They then also, trust the people that they love. They then know how to be kind to those around them. And then they trust that good things will come their way. 
So this is actually a worksheet that is in circle of security that we ask the parents, what are the three most important things on this list for you to have with your child? Um, and all these things are really good things, but circle of security can help parents gain this for their children. So I'm gonna show you a short video about circle of security, and then I'm gonna break down the weeks in the program. Hello, I'd like to introduce you to Circle of Security Parenting, a relationship program for caregivers. So let's get started. What is Circle of Security? It's a program that was developed with the goal in mind of finding ways to enhance secure attachment and caregiving relationships. Because as caregivers, we all want to do the best we can. And of course, we want to have secure relationships with our children. But what does that mean to enhance secure attachment? So we all want to have secure relationships, but here's the problem. Children don't come with an owner's manual. And it can be hard to know how to respond to the difficult behaviors and how to manage them. And of course, every child is different. But here's the good news. Children are born experts on the circle of security. Circle security is like an owner's manual that's been written by your child. Learning how to use the circle security helps us to figure out caring ways to get the job done. Because it's no secret, caregiving can be the hardest job on the planet. Having an owner's manual makes it easier to know the questions to ask that can help us find helpful answers. But sometimes when we're trying to make sense of what's going on with our children, the way we ask the question can get in our way of finding caring ways to help. What's wrong with my child? Why do they keep doing this? Why don't they listen? What does my child want from me? We all wanna get it right. So what if we ask the question in a different way? The Circle Security Roadmap helps us ask the question in a different way. When we think about behavior, we think about reinforcing the behavior we like. We might use stickers or treats or give compliments. And when we think about behavior we don't like, we try to find ways to stop that behavior. We might do things like timeouts or spankings or ignoring the behavior. Circle security gives us a way to think differently about either trying to reward the behavior we like or trying to get rid of the behavior we don't like. The circle is about thinking outside of the box. And when we start to use the circle of security roadmap, we start to switch the focus. And instead of focusing on the behavior as trying to figure out what to do with it, we start to focus on the behavior as communication of a need and a need within the relationship. Let's take a tour of the circle and watch an introduction to circle security parenting. Parents. We all wonder if we're getting it right. We want to know we're meeting our children's needs, helping them grow and giving them all that we can. We try to combine our own experience of being parented with the advice of others and our own instincts and beliefs about what is best. And still, we so often worry that we're not succeeding. In a world that is always offering the next best parenting solution, the circle of security is based on decades of attachment research. Unlike many behavioral perspectives, it offers relationship tools to provide a new way of understanding your children's needs, creating lasting security for them and more satisfaction for you. The circle graphic has been created to help you know what to look for so you can read your children's behavior to guide you in meeting their needs. It's really not complicated. People of all ages have attachment needs. These needs can be divided in three ways. Let's look at this child. First, he needs to know the freedom and confidence to go out and explore his world. Second, he needs to feel assured that whenever he's ready, he can come back for comfort and protection. Third, he needs his caregiver to be in charge in a kind way. Three basic needs that can be thought of as going out on the circle, coming in on the circle, and hands on the circle. Let's have a look in more detail. 
Feeling safe and supported, our children want to discover their world. When going out, they need to know that their exploration is encouraged, that we're right there watching over them, delighting in them, offering help when needed, and ready to enjoy their new adventures with them. And when they're coming in, they need us to refill their emotional cup. This means organizing their emotions and letting them know we are delighted to welcome them back, protect, comfort, and understand them. The key for us as parents is to remain strong and kind while knowing when to encourage their going out into the world and how to be available to welcome them back to us. It's crucial that we learn to identify our children's needs like this because misreading them or worse, missing them altogether can cause pain and frustration. We all know how uncomfortable it can be to be held too close when we want to be out exploring or kept at a distance when we need emotional support or simply to be without someone who is bigger, stronger, wiser and kind who we can trust to understand what we need when we're feeling lost, confused or out of control. When a child misbehaves, the cause is often rooted in how safe and secure they're feeling. So it's not surprising that they behave well when a parent learns to tune into their child's needs on the circle in this way. And because our needs on the circle never disappear, learning to read cues can help you better understand and meet the needs of people of all ages, including your own. So that's all there is to it. Just know that at any given moment, your child is somewhere on the circle asking you to meet a need. Support my going out. Welcome my coming in. Be the hands that keep me safe by staying in charge and committed to helping me feel connected. And please remember this. There's no such thing as perfect parenting. At Circle of Security, we've come to realize that good enough is, well, good enough. All of us are going to miss needs on the circle time and again. Welcome to the club. But if we meet our children's needs enough of the time, the results will be happier, healthier, more secure children and parents too. This video is available on our website and it's also available on YouTube and Vimeo if you're interested. The Circle Security Roadmap helps us to shift from asking the question, what does this child want from me? So when we ask the question like that, what does this child want from me? It can be hard to make sense of this behavior and things start to look really random and it's hard to make sense of what's going on. But if we start to use the roadmap and we ask, what does my child need? We can shift from asking the question to now having an answer. Oh, well, I see what they need. I'm using the roadmap. It's very easy to understand. I can start to see that there's a pattern that's emerging. When we start to make sense of the behavior and we begin to see the underlying need and we see the pattern of going out on the top of the circle, coming back in on the bottom, it's an emerging pattern and it makes it look safe and it feels predictable. And this is a good thing. So circle security offers us a way to see things differently. And because attachment is so intuitive, circle security has circled the globe. It's now been translated into 14 different languages and it's available in more than 30 countries with more than 25,000 facilitators that have been trained all around the world. And the interesting thing is that as the circle travels the world, at our core, we all have these same needs. Learning to read the map is an intuitive process and it's easy to think, I now understand the circle security, but what good is a roadmap when you're in the heat of the storm with your child? How does Circle Security address problems like crying children, tantruming, screaming, refusing? You need so much more than a roadmap to be able to respond to these kinds of difficult behaviors. There's many more layers yet to learn and understand. Thank you for taking time for this introduction to the Circle Security Parenting. For more information, you can visit us at our website at circleofsecurityinternational.com. If you're watching with a Circle of Security Parenting Facilitator, now's the time to ask questions about how you can find out more about this program. Thank you for your time, and I wish you well on your journey learning more about the Circle of Security. Hello. Um, okay. okay, so that was that mini video. I still have some more to talk about it, so I can't answer questions just yet unless I need to be interrupted. Um, 
So I'm going to go through what um, each week looks like. And I'm going to explain a little bit more some of the concepts that the video was talking about. Um, I think before I jump into the what the breakdown of the weeks, the one thing that I want to stress is the idea that parents strive to be good enough. And also the idea that you can't be a perfect parent. Um, and the reason being is because we don't live in a perfect world. So if children don't know or don't haven't heard the word no or haven't heard like I can't get to it right now, then they're not going to be able to cope with the feelings that come when we have to delay something that we need. Um, so I also think that that message of being perfect is harmful and then also that being good enough is good enough. I think helps to decrease the anxiety that some of our caregivers and parents may feel. So the weeks of circle of security, they build on top of each other. So the first week is really just explaining the concept of going out on the circle and coming in on the circle. So caregivers and parents, they watch a video, they explain how these circles, how kids are doing this even before that, we're, before we learn about circle of security. Um, I, if you watch children play on the playground, you're going to see this going out and exploring and then coming back into their parents. Um, and that how it's a constant thing that is happening. Um, so they help to break down that message that it's already happening and then it helps to further explain when it happens and how it happens. Um, so in the first week, they don't break down the needs on the circle. Circle of security is just really focused on helping parents understand the need to explore and the need to be welcomed by their parents. Uh, so then the second week is where the circle of security really gets into these eight needs. I only have seven listed on my outline because there's one need that is talked about twice, and that need is delight in me. Um, this would be a point where I would ask my participants or my clients, um, why is it that delight in me is seen on both the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle? First, it goes into delight in me is just through loving your child for who they are. They don't have to do anything to earn that love from you. Um, I will be honest, I am not a parent yet, but I do have two small dogs who act just like children. And the way that I delight in them is really just to show love and to give them hugs and to be there with them. And it's very similar with, with human children too, that you really just have to show them love and just giving them love randomly helps to support their attachment with caregivers. So. And the reason why delight in me is so important on the circle is because that's how children start to gain awareness of themselves and then also how they start to develop their self-esteem. Um, and that's why it's so important that you do it on the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle. The other needs are watching over me, help me and enjoy with me. So now enjoy with me and delight in me sound very similar and the words are, all, are pretty much synonyms. Um, but the difference between the two is delay in me, the child does not have to do anything for the parent to show delight in them. But when a parent or a caregiver is enjoying with the child, it's moments where they're playing together or when a child is showing them, look what I have just done. And the parent is there to then enjoy with them and watch them as they're doing stuff that they're doing. A watch over me moment is when a caregiver notices or is watching the child as they are playing. So they're not going and they're not hovering over the child. They're actually sitting with like an open body language ready for what the child needs from them. Um, help me is a moment where, oh, we see that you need some help. Let me come now and help you get through whatever obstacle you wanna get through. So that's the needs on the top of the circle or the needs of the children when they go out to explore. 
And then there's four more needs coming with the welcoming in or the bottom of the circle. So that those bottom needs are protect me, comfort me, delight in me again, and organize my feelings. So protect me is when we're having big feelings and or we're feeling like we're scared, we need that protection. Um, comfort me is maybe we're feeling hurt and the caregiver is there to support them in their comfort. Delight in me, again, is just loving on them for who they are. And then organize my feelings is where you're sitting there with these big feelings that they have. Whether it is joy, whether it's sadness, whether it's shame, organize my feelings. It's meant for caregivers to be able to help the child work through these feelings. Um, one of the points that Circle of Security makes is that it's really, really hard for a child to have to organize their feelings on their own, which is why I organize my feelings is there on the circle because we don't want to leave the children to their own to figure out how to sort their feelings because they're little and they don't necessarily know how to sort out their own feelings. So they need adults there to help them with that. So the next week they talk about being with and it talks about parents and caregivers as the secure base or a safe haven. So if we look at my graphic to the right of my slide, this is actually an activity from Circle of Security. So they break down six core emotions. So we have curiosity, joy, sadness, fear, anger, and shame. So what they ask the parents to do is they ask the parents to actually think about their own childhood. And they are asked to put these core emotions either inside the circle. So times that in their experience, they feel like their caregivers were able to be with them. Those emotions would go in the middle. So a lot of the times I will see joy and curiosity in the middle of the circle. And then the instruction for the perimeter are the feelings or emotions that the parent themselves, how they, if the way that their own parents were with them, if it was sometimes accepted. So that would go on the border. So sometimes that could be, sometimes I also see curiosity, sometimes sadness is there as well, um, but it's different for everyone. And then the last instruction is outside of the circle, you put the feelings and emotions that were not accepted by your caregivers. Um, and it helps the parents to be aware of maybe where they feel uncomfortable supporting their children in these six core emotions. So kind of starting to get them to become aware that what the caregivers and what the parents bring to the relationship. The next week is talking about being with, with infants, which looks slightly different than with toddlers. So being with infants on the circle, they still go out and explore and they still come back into the caregiver. The way that infants do this is actually all by where they look. So if I was the infant right now and my uh, camera is my caregiver right now, I am in with my caregiver. As soon as I turn my head out, I have now been exploring and then I come back in to have my parent welcome me. So kind of what they talk about is how we can let our infants explore and we don't need our infants totally locked in on us because it is healthy for them to explore their world around them. Um, one of, in, in my education, I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Costa and his big thing was baby watching. So if you see a baby at all in the next couple of weeks, you can actually notice the circle with them and their caregiver. So every time they look out, they're exploring. And then when they come back in, you see they're joining back in with their caregiver. Um, so the next week is the path to security. Here, the big concept in this week is to talk about shark music. 
So shark music is helping, is a way to explain care, the caregiver's and parents' own anxiety in the parent, caregiver, and child relationship. So if anyone is familiar with ghosts in the nursery, this kind of breaks down that concept a little bit more to then also go back to our being with circle. So understanding that there are going to be times on the circle where the caregivers essentially fight, flight, or freeze response is activated because they feel like something on the circle isn't safe. So sometimes some caregivers and parents have difficulties allowing their children to explore because they see that as dangerous. Where if there's no danger involved, then it's okay to let them to explore. And then also as well, some caregivers feel like they can't accept their children as often because maybe they're afraid of, afraid of spoiling their baby, but you can't spoil a baby because babies don't understand limits. Um, or they're afraid of coddling their children too much. So it's to help them understand that, no, it's okay when children come back to you. So it helps to break down that idea. And they utilize the Jaws music a little bit to help them understand when you look at a beach and the surrounding sounds are nice and they're relaxing, you're more likely to want to go on the beach. But when you start hearing the Jaws music or when you start hearing shark music, it becomes so much harder to then get to the beach because of all the anxieties that kind of come with that Jaws music. So after learning about shark music, we then go more into what some struggles are in the parenting relationship. Um, so they bring this idea of being bigger, stronger, wiser, and kind. So their little thing is always be bigger, stronger, wiser, and kind. Whenever possible, follow my child's need. Whenever necessary, take charge. Um, I have told parents in the past that the whenever possible, follow my child's need is actually only 30% of your time with your children. And the relief that I've seen from parents when they're like, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be always on them. Gives them a nice like sense of like relief to then be able to be more present in the caregiving relationship. I've had parents tell me that they tell all their parent friends that that's what this statistic is, is that you, only, you have to be there 30% with your children. Or yet, whenever possible, following your child's lead 30% of the time. Um, so in here, we go back to the idea of shark music and talking about how we have this bigger, stronger side and this kind side. Some people feel the need to be more kind without the bigger and stronger. So that kind of has them become weak in a way to then the reverse, when you don't have the kind and you have the bigger and stronger, you end up coming off as mean. So the stress, what circle of security stresses is that you're bigger, stronger, wiser, and kind. And that wiser part helps you know when you need to be either bigger, stronger, and kind. But you're always having these four adjectives in your head as you're with your kids. Um, the next week talks about this idea of rupture and repairing relationships. When I ran this in my groups and in my internship, I worked with mothers who had open DCP and P cases. And the idea of rupture could be when you're in a disagreement, when you're distracted, or when you have your children taken from you. So for them, they understood that as a rupture, but the important thing that circle security stresses is that repair. What happens when you're back with your child? What happens after the argument? What happens after everybody's all calmed down? How do we then repair what had just happened? So for these mothers, it was helpful for them to know that yes, there's a rupture occurring, but when I come back to my kids, the repair is just as important and that the repair allows it so that I can continue my relationship with my child and I can continue working on our attachment. Um, so again, in here, we talk about being good enough and then also how shark music impacts the rupture. So the way that they show rupture is actually that 
the, the diagram of the hands on the circle, they actually come off the circle and then you have the child there kind of running and not sure what to do because they no longer have their secure base or their um, safe haven. Um, so that's how they bring shark music back into it. And once they explain shark music, it's almost like a buzzword that comes back all the rest of the sessions. And then the last session is a summary. So it goes through all the things that the caregivers learned. They get a little like prompt where they see like pictures from the videos that they have seen. And then we all talk about what are some different things that they remembered from the past eight weeks. And then at the end, they get all the material that they had been working with during the eight weeks. And then they also get their certificate. All right, so I'm at the point of my presentation where I'm ready for questions. And those are the two dogs I was talking about earlier. Thank you so much, Amanda. That was really interesting, uh, really great information. And the dogs, of course, you know, I love seeing the dogs. I'm surprised my dog hasn't made an appearance yet because he usually tries to sit on my lap while I'm running meetings, but. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know that. Thank you for sharing your little guys. <laughs> um, I have a question in the chat. And also, uh, if anybody has questions for Amanda, uh, now would be the time to raise your hand or put them in the chat. Uh, Katie is just looking for some clarification. You had mentioned ghosts in the nursery or ghosts from the nursery. She just wanted, she was wondering if that was the title of a, of a book or something uh, and what it, what the exact phrase was. It's the title of an article. It's ghost in, Ghosts in the Nursery. And as I'm talking about it right now, I apologize because I can't remember the author of Ghosts in the Nursery, but it's an older article in this attachment research that has been going on for decades. I can look it up really quickly Donna now. To Freiburg. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Uh, I see we've got a couple more questions coming through the chat. Um, Holly is in the UK right now. Hi, Holly. And uh, she's wondering how somebody goes about running this eight week course. She would like to, but she's in the UK. So is there like a group of trainers or ways that you can find people who are already trained in this uh, modality? So there is a central hub that is in Orlando, Florida. Um, you go, so it's based in the United States but they provide trainings. That's a five day long training. Um, I am not entirely sure if they give the trainings internationally, if they themselves fly internationally. I can't remember that part, but I do know that you can go onto Circle Security's website and you can register for this training to then become a trainer or then become a facilitator yourself. Oh, Holly's saying she'd like to take, uh, would like to do the course, not run it. So I'm guessing, Holly, you would like to, you'd like to actually be a, a participant in the course. Yeah. So, do you know of any way that she could get that she could take the course? Uh, so, UK. Yep. So she would go to the Circle of Security um, website, and she would look for facilitators in her area. Thanks. And I'll I'll put that website back in the chat in a moment. Um, Yolanda is wondering uh, if some of these interventions can be used for uh, teens with separation anxiety issues. So there is a circle of security created for teenagers. Um, however, I'm not trained in that. But the parents can utilize similar stuff with children. So I'm wondering about that being with Circle, if that would be helpful for teenagers and their parents, for parents to understand what is what feelings are they avoiding because of the shark music coming up for them. Um, so that kind of would be where I'd be wondering. And then also, yes, if you actually think about yourselves, 
you can kind of be in the circle of securities with different relationships in your life. So um, if you think about friendships, romantic relationships, um, when you go out and when you're away from them, what that's like, are you confident that you can come back to them and that they're still going to be who they are and they're going to respond to you the same way? Um, and then so you're going out, you're trusting that they're either going to be there supporting you, they'll be there helping you, they'll be there enjoying in your accomplishments, or they'll just like you for who you are. Um, so then when you come back in, they can kind of also still uh, match those needs coming in as well. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, I see a question in the chat. Uh, apologies if I mispronounce your name. It looks like Aram or Iram maybe, uh, who's asking. Uh, Iram is uh, an intern for Good Morning Parents that provides support for incarcerated families. And they were hoping to get information on how circle of security can be applied uh, for families with incarcerated individuals uh, and what types of resources may be available for children who have relationships with an incarcerated family member? So I think the first part of the question is how to support the parents who are incarcerated and or who are going through the separation with their children. Um, and my and my answer would be giving them sort of like providing circle of security to them. Um, I'm trying to think I'm pretty sure that I have heard of circle of security being used in prisons and in jails. Um, and it help, helps parents to understand the needs of their children still. And that also circle of security comes with saying, we know you want to be the best parent for your child. Um, to then the resources for the children, um, I can imagine all the different feelings that the children are having. So helping to support those feelings. Um, I would have to think a little bit harder and more about the resources for the children who have relationships with an incarcerated family member, but I think it's about meeting their needs and having whatever, whoever their person is be there to meet those needs. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, other questions? Uh, again, you can raise your hand or just add something to the chat. Um, while we're waiting, uh, I guess one thing that uh, is just occurring to me as we're talking, Amanda, uh, I'm just wondering, so is this primarily designed to be provided for two parent or two caregiver families, or is it something that like one of the parents or caregivers could do and still get the same impact? Like if, if a two caregiver family not everyone's able to participate. You can do the two, you can do as many caregivers that are for the child as, as they want to come and attend or only one of the caregivers or parents. Thanks. You're welcome. Also, I don't know how familiar you are with the, uh, with the research background for the circle. Uh, but I'm also wondering if you know if there have been studies of the effectiveness uh, in specific populations. So has it been studied for use with Black and Brown populations or with LGBTQ populations? Uh, or has it primarily just been, been studied more at a general level? Um, I, in looking briefly through the research, I was seeing that is there's evidence based behind it. Um, I know that they work to make the circle of security videos inclusive. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, in saying inclusive, I feel like I really only remember the racial inclusivity. I'm not sure about the LGBTQ community in it as well. Um, but there is research also on circle of securities page that explains it further as well. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like something that would be applicable pretty much across the board. Uh, it, it seems to be fairly rooted, you know, in, in just basic human experiences and human development, but always useful to to know if if minority populations have been studied and considered when they're when they're planning these programs. Uh, other questions for Amanda, we still have uh, a, a decent amount of time if we need it.
is this uh, is is the circle? This is a a a a group that you guys provide through Bridge to Balance, also. Yes, it is. Okay. So if people are interested in taking the program, they could go to the Bridge to Balance website, or if they have questions about it, they could reach out to you via your email. Yes, they can. Great. I will, uh, and I'll make sure that your email address and the Bridge to Balance website is included in the follow-up email that gets sent out. Um, Yolanda is asking, do you know if uh, the courses are taught in multiple languages? I don't know at Bridge to Balance if you do a multilingual program or if they're I, in the state. So I unfortunately am not bilingual, um, but I do know of providers up north that have given it in Spanish. Um, so there's definitely Spanish speakers giving circle security up north. I feel like there can, there's probably some scattered throughout New Jersey. I just don't have the best idea of it at the moment. Um, I know the training I did, there was people from all over New Jersey, all over the world. Um, so you would be able to learn more about the classes that are given in different languages through the website as well. And then I know Circle of Security, I know there's definitely a Spanish version that I've seen. I know there's French, um, I'm pretty sure there's German. I would have to go back to the actual site to specifically say what languages they have, but they're actually pretty good with the different languages they have. Great, so the, so the curriculum is available uh, in multiple languages. Which yes. Definitely very helpful. Uh, I'm going to drop the Bridge to Balance uh, website in the chat uh, so people have it there as well. And then I'm going to drop the uh, Circle of Security website in there again in case anybody still needs it. Thank you. Any other questions about the presentation or questions for Amanda? If not, uh, we can wrap a little early and give you all part of your day back. I know we all love when that happens. So uh, anything else before we wrap? Oh, I do see something else. Yep, right you, yep, that's where, yep, yep, yep. That's actually where I got a lot of my education from and Dr. Gerard Costa used to be the director there. Um, and then now the director is Caitlin Mulcahy or Dr. Caitlin Mulcahy. Mm -hmm. That's in response to uh, Katie's comment in the chat, Mont Montclair University Center for Autism and Early Childhood Mental Health. Uh, and she says mentions uh, circle of security and their training for keeping babies and children in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you took keeping babies and children in mind, Katie. That's like my old life. <laughs> okay, well, if there are no other questions, uh, thank you all for joining us today and we'll end a little bit early. Uh, I see some people thanking you for your time and, and the information, Amanda, so thanks very much. And um, again, if you can send me your slides uh, when we're done, I'll get everything together and hopefully we'll get the email out to everybody that registered uh, within the next day or so. So thank you all for joining us today and we'll see you at our next community conversation. Bye everyone.